Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you a newer way of configuring your Flask app. So this was released in Flask 2.1.0, and it basically allows you to configure from environment variables without having to write much code. So first, let me show you how this is done typically. So I'll import OS, and this will allow me to access environment variables. So if I do like os.environ.git, for example, and let's say the secret key, I can get the secret key from my environment variables. So I'll do like app.config secret key is equal to this. And then I'll print this out, right? So app config secret key. And when I run this app, we see I get none for the secret key. So this is where the secret key should be. So what I'll do is I'll stop the app and then I'll export that environment variable secret key equals my secret. And then I'll run this again. And then we see my secret appears down here. So that part works just like we expect. But using this OS environ git for each of the environment variables can be a little tedious. So there is a quicker way of doing this. And you do that by using app.config.from underscore prefixed underscore env. So the way this works is it's going to look for any environment variables that you have that begin with flask underscore. Then it's going to drop the flask underscore and then take the rest of that as the name of the environment variable and add it to your configuration under the same name. So for the secret key, if I do this, export flask underscore secret underscore key equals my new secret. Then if I get rid of this line and run it, we see my new secret. So you see, I didn't have to assign it to secret key directly. It was already done for me by this from prefix environment variable. And this works really well with python.env. So let me go ahead and install that. So pip install python.env. And what this allows you to do is create files uh, .env and .flaskenv. So I'll create both. So env and flaskenv. Typically, the idea in the Flask ENV is you put public variables. So something like Flask environment is development, uh, Flask app is app. You can do stuff like that. So these are public, so anybody can see them. You wouldn't have an issue if someone saw this file. However, with the .env, these are private variables. So this is something that has like your passwords and your uh, database URLs, for example. And this is something that you wouldn't commit to your repo. This is kept somewhere else and this contains all the sensitive information. So let's say I wanted to include the database URI for SQL Alchemy. So typically I would do something like this. So SQL Alchemy database URI equals, let's say uh, SQLite and then just db.sqlite3, right? So this is in the file. So when I run this, python.iv will automatically load everything in here into my environment, right? So what I wanna do is I want to print out this here. So I'll just copy this and I'll add the database URI here. And when I run this, we see I get an error. So it doesn't have the SQL Alchemy database URI yet. That's because I haven't loaded it correctly. However, if I prefix this with flask underscore, and then I run this, we see now it appears. It appears twice because the server started twice, but we see that I have my SQLite and then db.sqlite3. And you can see we did not have to use OS here to get this working. So I just want to quickly show you that perhaps this is the approach that you want to take with your configuration values because you know using OS can be a little tedious um, and this is a good way to keep your app organized. So when it comes to like dev and production configurations, the difference would be the env file. So you can have like an env.dev, env.prod, and then you can just put the appropriate values in each file. And then this part of the code will remain the same. It's just going to load from prefix env. You can change the prefix if you want, but Flask is the default. So that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this approach to configuring your app, if you like it, or if you'll continue using the approach that you're using now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.